So I've been testing the older generation i7s lately. I've already tested the first generation 870 and the second generation 2600K. I still haven't found a good deal on a third gen 3770K, so I've decided to skip ahead and test the fourth gen 4790K because I've already had I've had that sitting in office now for a while because it used to be my old system. So when you're looking at these results, you're going to have to keep in mind that there's another processor that's going to be slotting in between the 2600K results and the 4790K results. Let's talk a little bit more about the 4790K before we continue. This processor launched in 2014 for an MSRP of roughly $350. Today in 2020 though, you can find it on eBay for about $200, and an accompanying Z970 motherboard is going to cost you $100 to $150 depending on the manufacturer you want and the feature set that you want. So also when looking at these results, you got to keep in mind that this combination uh, is accompanied by a $300 price point, and for that same price, you can find really good combinations of new hardware that's very competitive with this. But We'll touch on that topic at the end of the video. What does our test bench look like? Well, it consists of the 4790K at stock clocks. We'll be doing a separate video all on overclocking these i7s at a later time. That's accompanied by a MSI Z970S Crate Edition motherboard, nothing fancy. For the memory, we have eight gigs of Corsair Vengeance DDR3 1600 megahertz. Again, we'll be doing another video on using 16 gigs of 2400 MHz DDR3 memory on all of these older processors, um, just to see how memory bandwidth affects um, the older processors. And for the graphics, we're using a GTX 980 Ti from EVGA. This isn't the fastest graphics card that you can use to test older processors, but it's the fastest one that I have to test them, and we already have results using it, so we're going to continue to use it. So let's check out those results. So before we jump into the results, we gotta go over the testing methodology. We're gonna be testing at two resolutions, 1080p and 720p. The reason we're also testing at 720p is because we don't wanna be GPU bound, we wanna be CPU bound. Because when we're CPU bound, we can see the difference in the processor lineups here. Whether it's uh, the number of cores and threads, the IPC of the processors, or even the frequency as well. This testing methodology would hold up if we were testing at 4K and 1080p. Unfortunately, our 980 Ti isn't able to get playable results at 4K, um, but most likely any GPU you use is going to be graphically bound or GPU bound at 4K, and at 1080p, your GPU is going to have a much easier time rendering a lot of frames, and your CPU is going to be the one playing catch up. And again, in those scenarios, you're going to see the difference between certain processors when you're CPU bound. All right, CSGO is up first, and at high settings at 1080p, the 4790K got an average FPS of 352 with a 1% low of 71, and at 720p, the average FPS was 388 with a 1% low of 124. So what's going on with the 1% lows here? Well, at 1080p, the reason these three processors stay roughly the same performance is there's a section of the benchmark where the camera flies through a smoke bomb and at that point we're GPU bound because it's trying to render all of those alpha effects for the smoke bomb but at 720p the GPU would have less load on it um, so it would be able to render those frames a little bit faster but the funny thing is each one of these processors increases that 1% low just a little bit so it's a little strange there because we technically should see the performance stay relatively the same between all three of these because we should still be GPU bound in that scenario but we aren't so that's pretty interesting another thing to look at here is the performance difference between the 4790k and the 2600k uh, at 720p you can really see that gap stretch out but you have to keep in mind that there is another processor the 3770k that is supposed to slot somewhere in between those two processors so it's not the huge performance gain we saw from going from the 870 to the 2600k um, but it's still an increase so that's still nice to see Apex Legends is up next, and with the late 2019 update at high settings at 1080p, the 4790K got an average FPS of 100 with a 1% low of 62. At 720p, we got an average FPS of 129 with a 1% low of 85. So what's going on with these results? Well, Apex Legends is an online-only game, and with online-only games, I actually play out the matches, but I try to land in a very similar location so that I can get similar results. And at 1080p, that's basically what happened here. This is almost margin of error stuff. Um, 
So the difference between the 2600K and the 4790K to me looks like we're GPU bound in this scenario. We got roughly the same performance numbers um, and they stayed relatively the same, which means that we are most likely GPU bound, especially when we look at the 720 results, uh, 720p results, the 2600K and 4790K both increase their average and 1% low FPS, but stay roughly the same. Um, so in Apex Legends, it looks like we are still GPU bound at 1080p and even 720p. All right, Devil May Cry 5 at high settings at 1080p, the 4790K got an average FPS of 135 with a 1% low of 90. And at 720p, we got an average FPS of 140 with a 1% low of 94, which is roughly the same as 1080p results. In this scenario, we are CPU bound in both 1080p and 720p but we're able to see the generational differences between each one of these processors because of the stair step uh, graph results we have here. So there is definitely a generational difference that you can tell in this title, but again, there's another processor that slots in between there. So the gains from generation to generation, the 2600K to the 4790K is not as high of a jump as the 870 to the 2600K, which is a little disappointing, but it's an increase nonetheless. Fortnite with the late 2019 update on the highest settings at 1080p, the 4790K got an average of 109 FPS with a 1% low of 55, and at 720p that rose to 151 average with a 1% low of 84. So uh, Fortnite is another one of those online titles uh, where I tried to land in the same area to get very similar results, and at 1080p you can see that the 2600K and 4790K are pretty much uh, within margin of error of each other. And that tells me that this game, at 1080p at least, with the 980 Ti, is GPU bound. But uh, when you look at the 720p numbers, you can see that with a lesser load on the GPU and more strain on the CPU to spit out more frames, you can see the gap between the 2600K and the 4790K uh, increase quite a bit there, even with the 1% lows. Um, but again, keep in mind that the 3770K slots in somewhere in between these, so that's two generational uh, two gens <laughs> difference in between those two. So that gap there is is kind of smaller from generation to generation. An increase nonetheless, um, but still a little bit disappointment that it's so low. Halo Reach from the Master Chief Collection with the enhanced settings at 1080p. The 4790K saw 162 average FPS with, with a 1% low of 53. And at 720p, we got pretty much the same results. Uh, this game is very CPU dependent and CPU bound in this title because you can see the pretty nice stair-stepping uh, from the different generations in the results here. Uh, there's definitely an increase going from the 2600K to the 4790K, but it's not as big of a difference going from the 870 to the 2600K. That one generational jump is incredible, um, but it definitely looks like it's slowed down because there's another processor that's supposed to be slotting in between the 2600K and the 4790K. It's an increase though, so we'll count that as a win. Rocket League at the highest settings at 1080p, the 4790K saw 243 average FPS with a 1% low of 168, and at 720p we got very similar results but the 1% low dropped down to 128. So Rocket League is a online game. Uh, they do have bot matches, but because in both scenarios we would be using CPU performance, whether for it it would be for the AI components or uh, in an online match. I just decided to test an online match so that these are results that you would see yourself. Um, it's not the most um, scientific way to test a game, but uh, we do get interesting numbers nonetheless, and the average FPS really tells th the truth about your performance in the title. The 1% low seems to be affected by what map you get, and pretty much every time that I benchmark this game, I get different maps. So kind of just disregard the 1% low and look at the average FPS. Uh, at 1080p, um, the 4790K was hitting the 250 FPS cap limit in this title, and, and at 720p, we were definitely hitting that most of the time. So uh, the 4790K isn't really able to stretch its legs as far as it possibly could go, but uh, you're still hitting the FPS limit in this title, so I would say that that's a win uh, for both the 2600K and the 4790K.
So Battlefield 1, I have to say this for every single benchmark result that I do. Uh, Battlefield 1 is the newest Battlefield title I have. They told me not to buy Battlefield 5 if I didn't want to, so I didn't. Uh, Battlefield 1 though is still a beautiful looking game and it's pretty intensive on hardware, so I still like to test it. And at ultra settings at 1080p, the 4790K got 109 average FPS with a 1% low of 82. And at 720p, that rose to 132 average FPS with a very similar 84 FPS for the 1% low. At 1080p, we are probably getting close to being GPU limited here because the difference between the 2600K is not that substantial. Um, but at 720p, you do see that gap widen more uh, where the 4700k definitely takes off a little bit in the 1% low and the average FPS. Um, to be honest though, you're already looking at 130 FPS on average, so I didn't really notice a huge performance difference testing the 2600k and 4790k, but still 4790k beat the uh, 2600k pretty handily. Okay, so The Witcher 3 is going to be the last title that we test. And at the highest settings, at 1080p, the 4790K got 86 FPS on average with 1% low of 57. And at 720p, that rose a little bit to 110 FPS on average with a 1% low of 71. Witcher 3 is pretty intensive title to run. And at 1080p, I just like with Battlefield, I believe we are getting very close to being GPU limited. But at 720p, you can see the performance difference between the processors widen just a little bit more and the 4790K is quite a bit faster than the 2600K, I would say. But again, remember that there's two generations uh, in between those two processors. So the 3770K is gonna slot somewhere in between there. And I would really like to see more of a gap between the two, but at 720p with the 4790K, we could actually be GPU limited in that scenario. So there's a possibility we could be getting a much higher FPS if we had a better graphics card. But Again, that's another win for the 4790K. It is faster than the 2600K. Cinebench is gonna be the last benchmark that we have, and this is more of a synthetic workload. So if you're doing video rendering or 3D modeling rendering or something like that, this is more representative of the difference that you'll see in your workloads. So the i7-4790K got a score of 2036, which is substantially more than 2600K, but if you're talking generation on generation improvements, it's not as big of a jump as the 870 to the 2600K. 3770K slots somewhere in between those, and if we put it right in between the 2600K and the 4790K, you will have seen a 3000 point difference between those generations going the 2600K, 3770K, and 4790K, whereas the 870 to the 2600K was a 4,000 point increase. So it's not as good of an increase, but I am interested to see where the 3770K will slot into there when I get my hands on one of those. It's still actually a quite substantial increase. So that's another win I would say for the 4790K. So looking at these results, would I recommend this combination in 2020? For $300, no. There are much better combinations of newer parts for $300 that you can get today. If you want to go down the AMD Ryzen route, there are fantastic options there. And even Intel has fantastic options for around the $300 mark. The newer i5s have six cores. They have higher IPC and higher frequencies than the 4790K. And newer games and newer engines are going to utilize those threads in higher IPC and frequency much better than they would on this 4790K. Recommending a four core eight thread processor in 2020 is very hard when you have these newer options packing more threads and more cores So for that price. No, I don't recommend it buy new hardware Now if you get a good deal on this and by a good deal, I mean probably around $150 Yeah, it's a great deal. It's probably better than what you're gaming on now but finding this combination for $150 is practically impossible um, these older i7s hold their value even though the performance doesn't hold up uh, as well. But those are my opinions. Those are my results. You're more than welcome to form your own opinions down below and let me know what they are. If you like the video, hit like, hit subscribe if you want to see more content like this. If you have suggestions on videos for me to do in the future, if you want me to test uh, certain processors that I have with certain titles, I'm more than happy to make those videos, but leave a comment down below letting me know. Until the next one. Thanks for watching.